Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about definite integrals as limits of Riemann sums. In the last video, we started talking about how the definite integral represents the area under a curve. In this case, for example, the area under f of x from zero to three can be represented by the integral from zero to three of f of x dx. So let's dive in and see how this works. We'll start by revisiting the idea of a left Riemann sum, and we'll start simple by just using three rectangles. If we do this, the definite integral is approximately equal to delta x times the quantity of f of zero plus f of one plus f of two. Now, we can also represent the sum of the areas of the rectangles using summation notation. So the integral from a to b of f of x dx is approximately equal to the sum of delta x times f of x sub i, where i is a counter that increments from zero to n minus one, where n is the number of rectangles, and x sub i equals a plus delta x times i. Let's see how this works for three rectangles. Since n equals three, i will increment from zero to two. Now we can find x sub i for each value of i. Remember, x sub i is the x value that we'll use to find the height of each rectangle. In this case, a is the left endpoint, which is zero, and delta x equals one. So when i equals zero, x sub i equals zero plus one times zero, which is just zero. In a similar fashion, we can find the other x sub i values when i equals one and two. And now we have our three x sub i values, zero, one, and two. And as you can see here, if we find f of each of those x sub i values, add them together and multiply that by delta x, we get the sum of the areas of the rectangles under the curve. Now remember, we can also have right Riemann sums. If we use three rectangles, the integral from zero to three of f of x dx is approximately equal to delta x times the quantity of f of one plus f of two plus f of three. We can write this using sum notation as well. We can say the integral from a to b of f of x dx is approximately equal to the sum of delta x times f of x sub i, where i is a counter that increments from one to n, where n is the number of rectangles, and x sub i equals a plus delta x times i. Now the reason that i increments from one to n here is because we're using the right side of each rectangle to determine the height of each rectangle. So for example, if i equals one, then x sub i equals a plus delta x times i, which is zero plus one times one, which equals one. And that's the x value that we use to determine the height of the first rectangle. In a similar fashion, we can find the other values of x sub i. And you can see if we find f of all the x sub i values, add them up and then multiply by delta x, we get the sum of the areas of the rectangles. Hopefully now we have a better understanding of how summation notation works with definite integrals. Let's also remember that if we use more rectangles, we get a better approximation of the area under a curve. And if we let the number of rectangles go to infinity, then we will get the exact area under the curve, the exact definite integral. But since infinity is not a number, we can't just write a sigma sign where i goes from one to infinity. Instead, we have to use a limit. So we can say that the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals one to n of the quantity of delta x times f of x sub i. Let's break this down to make sure we're super clear on what this notation means. The integral from a to b of f of x dx represents the exact area under the curve from a to b. Then we have the limit, which means as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. Then we have the sigma sign, which means add from i equals one to n delta x times f of x sub i, where delta x is the width of each rectangle and f of x sub i is the height of each rectangle. So we're adding the areas of all the rectangles from i equals one to n. But since we're letting n approach infinity, this means that we're adding the areas of an infinite amount of rectangles. And that will give us the exact area under the curve from a to b. 
Now you might be wondering, why did I use a right Riemann sum, where i goes from 1 to n, instead of a left Riemann sum, where i goes from 0 to n minus 1? And the truth is, it doesn't matter because we're letting n go to infinity, so both would produce the exact area under the curve. For the examples that we're going to do, we're going to be using this form where i goes from 1 to n. And speaking of examples, we'll look at those in the next video. For now, make sure that you understand the theory behind how to write a definite integral as the limit of a Riemann sum. And that's how you rock calculus!